From a trashed warplane found in the ice to unfortunate victims of a prehistoric sacrifice, here are 10 crazy things found frozen in ice. Warplane in Greenland Under 300 feet of ice in Greenland, a World War II P-38 plane has been discovered. On July 15, 1942, there were six P-38 fighter aircraft and two B-17 bombers that encountered a blizzard and were forced to conduct an emergency landing in the middle of a glacier in Greenland. All the crew members ended up being rescued just over a week later, but the aircrafts were all left behind. Over the years, the shifting ice sheets buried the aircrafts, which came to be known as the Lost Squadron. But 50 years later, in 1992, one of the planes was finally extracted from the ice. It was even restored to perfect flying condition. According to popular mechanics, a new expedition has discovered a second aircraft from the Lost Squadron. They used ground-penetrating radar mounted on drones to search for the buried planes. Once they detected one of them, a team went down to check it out. The aircraft has since been identified as the P-38 Echo and with support from the governments of the United States and the United Kingdom, along with Greenland, the extraction process began. The team is now using heat plates to tunnel down to the craft where they will then send workers to disassemble the plane and bring it up piece by piece. Iron Age Horse in Norway, a melting glacier high up in the mountains has revealed the remains of a horse that dates back all the way to the Iron Age. This is a pretty incredible find as it shows that people from the Iron Age were using horses to transport things high up in the mountains in areas where people were not previously thought to have been roaming around. It's believed that the horse discovered under the ice was being used at the time by hunters to carry reindeer carcasses off the mountains to be eaten. During the summer season, reindeer get bothered by horse flies and move up into the ice, and that must have made for an excellent hunting ground during the Iron Age. It makes sense that the hunters would have gone up there to search for potential food. Along with the actual horse remains, archaeologists also found horseshoes and horse manure in the ice. As the glaciers all over the world melt, more and more interesting discoveries that had been buried either in the Ice Age or near the end of the Ice Age are being uncovered. The horse in Norway is just one example of countless discoveries being thawed as our world warms. Several prehistoric horses have also been found in the ice. An extinct type of horse called the Lena horse was found with liquid inside of it. Scientists are now working to clone the horse and possibly bring it back to life. What do you think? Do you think this is a good idea? Let me know in the comments below, and while you're at it, be sure to subscribe if you are new here. We've got a lot of amazing videos coming up. Victims of Sacrifice Here we have a pretty disturbing discovery. Scientists first discovered the mummified remains of three children in 1999 entombed inside of a shrine near the summit of a volcano in Argentina over 21,000 feet up. The children buried there included a 13-year-old girl and a younger boy, and a girl who were thought to be around 5 years old. Their remains date back to 500 years ago during the reign of the Inca Empire who had dominated South America until the greedy Europeans arrived near the ending of the 15th century. The remains were found in exceptional condition because they had been preserved by the ice and the cold. What's really interesting is that an international team of researchers used forensics to try and discern a little more about the final moments of these children lives. What they found was mass amounts of alcohol and coca leaves in their systems. Basically, these three children had been consuming alcohol and cocaine before they were brought up to the top of the mountain to die. According to the BBC, alcohol and cocaine was strictly reserved for the elite and for special rituals in the Incan civilization. Scientists believe the children were selected for sacrifice, and that was when the alcohol and coca consumption began. And this may have been for the best since all three were locked in their tombs and left to die pretty nasty deaths. If I were being sacrificed, I probably would not mind being loaded up on booze and coca too. Medieval Mummies Let's check out some more frozen mummies. These medieval mummies come from a mysterious Arctic civilization recently discovered in Siberia. There are only two mummies in this situation, an adult and a baby, and they were both found in an archaeological complex that was first discovered in 1997. However, the mummies were not discovered until 2015. They were completely covered in copper, with the adult mummy being plated from head to toe and the child being covered in fragments of a copper kettle. During the Arctic expedition in 2015, scientists found at least 10 graves with 5 of them that had not been looted at all. This is likely thanks to the icy conditions keeping the tombs very well hidden. Apparently, the whole region was once home to an ancient civilization that lived there sometime between the 8th and 13th centuries AD. The expedition leader claims that the remains found 
code were in exceptionally good condition and needed to be removed with absolute care. Before the next expedition to this very cold place begins, the science team is going to check out the insides of the mummies, including their burial cocoons, and try to study their DNA to find out more about this extinct civilization in the Arctic and what they were all about. A New Island the Greenland ice sheet is enormous, and it has been melting at an alarming rate over the last few decades. This has contributed to global sea level rise and other environmental changes. But as the ice melts, more cool stuff is being uncovered. One of the coolest things to recently be revealed is an entire new island. The coast of Greenland is continuing to change regional maps, and the newest thing needing to be added to the map is a brand new island. And it's not the first. Two different glaciers have been slowly retreating from Greenland between 1990 and 2014, and this has added several new islands to the country. It started in 2012 with a narrow glacier connecting the unnamed island with the rest of the land, but now that ice is gone, and the only thing left is a lonely island. Some of these islands actually act as anchors keeping a specific glacier in place, so once the glacier melts off of the island, it's basically like it loses its roots and the rest of the glacier quickly vanishes. As more and more islands appear, the glaciers will melt even more quickly until Greenland is nothing but a bunch of bare islands and like seven or eight people. Anthrax release. A brutal heat wave in Siberia in 2017 resulted in an outbreak of deadly anthrax and a series of explosions. As the tundra thaws, things are getting out of control. This happened in northern Siberia, and a boy actually died from anthrax in the remote Yamal Peninsula when temperatures reached over 90 degrees Fahrenheit and melted the permafrost. What happened was that spores of highly infectious anthrax that had been frozen inside of infected reindeer rejuvenated themselves and infected local herds of reindeer, and the anthrax eventually was passed along the local people. As I already said, one boy died, but there were actually 20 others who were infected, treated, and ultimately survived. Up until this incident, anthrax had not been seen in the region for at least 75 years. It's all because of the freak heat wave and the ice thawing. As if an outbreak of anthrax isn't scary enough, there were also huge explosions in the same region. According to The Guardian, local reindeer herders saw flames shooting out of a massive crater that appeared out of nowhere in the ground. Experts believe that the melting permanent frost thawed dead vegetation and erupted in a blowout of extremely flammable methane gas. In simple terms, vegetation that had been dead and frozen for thousands of years thawed and released a bubble of methane, which then caught on fire. And apparently over the last three years, the same region has been victim to 14 other massive craters thanks to the melting ice. And as the ice melts, more and more bubbles of methane break open and release their gases. The Frozen Lighthouse the St. Joseph Lighthouse in Michigan is pretty incredible when it's frozen over with ice. Some pictures have been circling of the frozen lighthouse taken back in January. Apparently, this happens in the coldest part of winter. With strong gales and intense waves, the lighthouse eventually becomes encased completely in ice. This is not really a discovery, but it is pretty cool. Just look at the way the ice forms over the lighthouse. It looks like some kind of frozen castle from a fantasy world. The lighthouse is located on Lake Michigan near Chicago and it stands 35 feet tall and was first built in 1884. In this area, the air temperature drops significantly to around negative 4 degrees Fahrenheit, and the frozen waves crash up to nearly 20 feet up on the structure. Making the lighthouse even cooler is the skinny footpath leading between the lake and the building. It also freezes over with ice, and in the winter is very slippery. This is one of the most spectacular things to check out on Lake Michigan during the winter. And while there are many photos of the front of the lighthouse, not many people venture around the back for fear of the tall waves and rioting winds. Mammoth Brains just recently, an extremely well-preserved mammoth was discovered in the Siberian permafrost. Not only was the mammoth discovered with much of its hair not yet decayed, but it was also found with a mummified brain. This is one of the only examples ever of scientists discovering the brain of an animal frozen for nearly 40,000 years. The brain even still has its blood vessels. It was found on the Laptev Sea, and researchers believe the mammoth was between 6 and 9 years old when it died. 
After its discovery, the woolly mammoth was transported to an ice storage about 93 miles from the site, and it has since been put on display in several different locations. But don't worry, researchers have kept the actual brain. The investigators were able to study the cerebellum, which is a part located at the back of the brain. They were even able to see the white matter and the gray matter. This is the only woolly mammoth brain ever discovered, and according to live science, the researchers believe that woolly mammoths might have had complicated behaviors that are very similar to modern elephants. The researchers even found some traces of nervous tissue when examining the brain. At this point, it's almost like they found a living animal. Dive of Doom This has got to be the most brazen dive you have ever seen. Kingfisher birds are pretty gorgeous, and they very often dive into ponds to snatch little creatures to eat, but this unfortunate pair of kingfishers plunged into the water at the wrong time. This happened in Germany, and it was a priest who stumbled upon the two birds petrified in the ice. This was in northern Bavaria, and it must have happened after temperatures plummeted across most of Europe. Foresters cut the blocks of ice out of the lake that contained the birds to preserve them, and the images are nothing short of shocking. Basically, kingfisher birds will dive through holes in frozen water to try and catch small fish. What probably happened is that both birds dove into the lake to catch some kind of fish. They couldn't find the hole to get back out, and in just a few moments, the birds were frozen and dead. While super tragic, it is also quite remarkable. To give you an idea of just how cold the temperature was in Germany at the time, it was about negative 22 degrees Fahrenheit. That's cold enough to freeze you solid in no time at all. Interestingly enough, it was during the same cold snap that a fox was also found in Germany completely frozen in a block of ice. During this time, the Mirror reported that at least 30 people died from the cold, and so far as we know, at least three very adorable animals were frozen in blocks of ice. Bleeding Glacier Probably the most disturbing thing to find beneath the ice is blood. I'm talking about the Bleeding Glacier from Antarctica. The dry valleys in Antarctica, even though they are covered in ice, are also some of the driest and most arid places on Earth. However, underneath the dry surface, there are lakes and very salty rivers. When talking about the Bleeding Glacier, it really does look like a small section of the glacier is just pouring blood into the ice, but it's actually a rust-colored brine causing the color. It's due to bacteria living underneath the ice. The dramatic blood hue is because brine seeps out from the end of the glacier. The briny water actually goes at least 3 miles up the glacier while there is more water stretching at least 7.5 miles inland that is twice as salty as seawater. This is all a little confusing, but the main point is that under the ice is groundwater that looks a lot like blood. And according to live science, the environment is actually similar to what we might find on Mars. Experts believe Mars also has lakes of briny groundwater under sheets of dried ice, and that the planet actually changed from an environment of liquid water to the dry, arid environment as seen in the dry valleys in Antarctica. What do you think is the craziest thing found in ice? Let me know in the comments. From a literal cyclops to a bag of human hands, here are the most incredible things ever caught in the ocean. Albino Cyclops Shark In a world of photoshopped monsters, it's hard to believe that the albino cyclops shark really exists. However, experts claim it is absolutely real. This bizarre creature has a single eyeball right in the middle of its forehead, making it look exactly like a swimming cyclops. So far as the story goes, the cyclops shark was actually sliced from the belly of a pregnant mother dusky shark, which had been caught by a commercial fisherman somewhere in the Gulf of California. According to a report from Fox News, shark researchers examined the creature and found that, yes, its singular eye was indeed made of perfectly functional optical tissue. However, they had serious doubts about the mutated creature surviving outside of the womb. The experts say there are less than 50 examples of such an abnormality ever recorded. The actual name for the condition is called cyclopia, and it's a developmental anomaly in which only one eye develops rather than two. There are even human fetuses that are sometimes affected with this condition. In the case of a 1982 cyclops baby in Israel, the girl was born seven weeks early with no nose and a single eye right in the middle of her face. It's reported that the infant only lived for 30 minutes after being born. 
Cyclopia is a rare but almost always fatal condition. It's a truly devastating genetic mutation. If you ever encounter an animal with one single eye, you absolutely have to document it. But this is not about animals or people that lose an eye in an accident or due to violence. Have you ever heard of Cyclopia? What do you think about it? Do you think it is possible that someday scientists will be able to help save babies born with this tragic condition? Let me know your opinion in the comments below, and while you're doing that, don't forget to subscribe if you have not already. There are lots of more videos coming up, and also let us know what videos you'd like to see. The Blue Mahi Mahi the blue mahi-mahi is a catch that only comes around once in a blue moon. This fish is nothing short of extraordinary. In Mexico, mahi-mahi are known as dorado, which translates to the golden one. These fish are extremely prized by professional anglers because of their quality flesh and spectacular golden colors. While thrashing on the end of the fishing line, a dorado will often sizzle in a variety of colors from a green-yellow to a vibrant gold. However, there is a special kind of fish even rarer than the golden dorado, and that's the blue dorado, or blue mahi-mahi. A fisherman fishing off the coast of Baja, California captured 154 dorado in just four days on a special excursion, and while most of them were the proper gold color, a few of these giant fish turned up completely blue. This is one of the rarest types of fish you can catch in the area. However, it might not actually be rare at all. Some experts claim that the dorado is able to change its flesh to be a different color. This means that they are sometimes caught looking silver, gold, or sky blue. After the mahi-mahi is dead and put inside the fish box, they typically turn the darker green or gold color. Animals that change colors are some of my favorites. It would be amazing to have that power, but instead we'll have to settle for our big human brains and no chameleon skin. The Tiny Marlin Marlin are pretty impressive fish, specifically the Atlantic Blue Marlin. These are massive and aggressive fish that are extremely prized by fishermen for their strength and acrobatics. And of course, they are pretty heavy, weighing in at around 1,500 pounds. This means most fishermen struggle for hours just to reel in a single blue marlin. However, Men's Journal has reported the smallest marlin ever captured. It was by a man named Richard Brackett, and the tiny little marlin is the smallest ever on record. It's only about the size of half your pinky finger, and even though it kind of looks like a small sailfish, the catch has been verified by biologists to be a legitimate blue marlin. Of course, it's not actually an adult marlin, it's only a baby, but the chances of catching one are still super small. And the craziest part of the story is that Brackett caught the fish in his hands and dropped it in a bucket to take a photo. The tiny little marlin had been swimming in the light behind the transom of his boat, and it was just as simple as cupping his hands and scooping the marlin into them. The fish was released afterwards and is hopefully living a long and peaceful life in the sea. But it's refreshing to hear a fisherman's tale about the smallest catch rather than the ridiculous tales of oversized fish. Giant Moonfish Here is one of the most disgusting fish ever captured from the ocean. It looks like something out of your nightmares. It's known as the Moonfish, and it was caught by fishermen in the waters off South Curl Island in Russia. As reported by the Siberian Times, the Moonfish is one of the rarer catches in the area. However, locals were absolutely astounded by the grotesque size of this particular Moonfish. It's the first known warm-blooded fish ever captured that has weighed over a ton. The boat that reeled the fish in was so surprised that it took them over a day to decide whether to take the catch back to shore or simply let it go back into the ocean. Sadly for the fish, it died while the fishermen were making their decision, so they brought it ashore and left it at the port. But this enormous fish began to rot, and so the local authorities decided they would give the giant fish carcass to the hungry local brown bears. The brown bears were extremely happy about this decision, as it is sometimes hard for them to find sufficient food. However, the scientists from Sock Hallen History Museum also wanted to get a hold of such a rare creature, and were disappointed it had been used to feed some local bears. There is apparently a deal now between the scientists and the fishermen to hand over any new specimens for research. Could you imagine it, just capturing a rare and valuable fish and letting it go to the animals? At least the bears were happy about it. The Chimera Lobster there is almost no way this lobster could be real. It's such a rare creature that there is almost no chance of ever finding another one like it. This is the two face of lobsters, half orange and half dark blue, but not its claws, only its body. It has perfect symmetry with half its shell, a hard blue color, and the other half a bright orange. It was caught off the coast of New Brunswick in Canada and is now more famous than most of us will ever be. Nobody even knew a lobster like this existed. It's an absolute anomaly. 
After the lobster was initially caught in Beaver Harbor, one of the crew members took the unique animal to the Huntsman Fundy Discovery Aquarium in St. Andrews to get more information on what exactly they had just pulled out of the water. But the staff at the aquarium were just as surprised as everybody else. One of the reasons this is so incredibly rare is that the shell of a lobster has its color determined much in the same way a human skin does. It all depends on how prominent certain color pigments are. In humans, we use melanin. But lobsters use a pigment known as astaxanthin. The explanation for this bizarre coloring must have something to do with a cellular split when the eggs were first fertilized, meaning that another lobster and this lobster somehow got their cells mixed up. In any case, the odds of finding another chimera lobster with two different tones split perfectly down the middle is somewhere around 1 in 50 million. It's probably never going to happen again. An enormous manta ray. This is one of those photos you've probably seen circulating that doesn't even look a little real. Everything about the giant manta ray in this photo screams fake, but I promise you it's 100% legit. It's one of the largest manta rays ever caught and brought to land, and it happened in 1933 off the coast of New Jersey by a man named Captain A. L. Kahn. You might be wondering just exactly how big the manta ray is, especially since it's being held in the air by a crane. Let me tell you, this monster weighed over 5,000 pounds when it was first caught, and it wasn't even caught on purpose, the captain had been angling 7 miles 12 kilometers from shore when the enormous manta got entangled in the anchor line. It nearly took out the man's boat, the coast guard had to be called, there were 22 rifle shots fired into the beast, and they never even got it onto the boat. They had to tow the manta ray back to the marina, where they celebrated their bizarre catch. Giant manta rays are still prominent in the world today, though their numbers are definitely dwindling. They can be found in the warmer oceans of the earth, and are actually pretty mellow and peaceful creatures. They typically survive only by eating plankton. Just like most of the largest animals on the planet, they are almost completely vegetarian. Looks like the giant manta ray is just another example of how important it is to eat your vegetables to grow big and strong. 54 Human Hands this one is pretty creepy, warning for those of you with sensitive stomachs. Fish aren't the only bizarre and jaw-dropping things caught in the ocean, not by a long shot. One of the most incredible things ever caught was a bag of severed human hands. And no, it was not caught in the ocean, but it was caught in a Russian river. It's a pretty grisly sight to behold. After the bag was found, the authorities emptied the contents into the snow to document them, but they don't really look like hands in the photos. They look more like old, crusty work gloves, but unfortunately, they they are indeed human hands, 54 of them to be exact. This happened in the city of Khabarovsk, far in the east of Siberia, but before you start blaming a serial murderer for all these hands, it's a little more complicated than that. You see, local authorities claim that the hands were taken from unidentified bodies and stored at a nearby forensic laboratory. The hands were supposedly taken to preserve their fingerprints in case they needed them for proof in a later investigation. But how did the bag of hands end up in the river? Well, it looks like it was dumped on a small island in the middle of the river. It's no wonder people were extremely suspicious you would think there are rules and regulations about dumping large garbage bags full of human hands in a river, but maybe not. It is Russia after all. Things get a little bit weird out in the Siberian Far East. Two-Headed Turtle Turtles are awfully cute all on their own, but what about the mutant two-headed turtle that was found on Hilton Head Island in South Carolina? Yes, it's as adorable as you would expect. The manager of the Sea Turtle Patrol Hilton Head Island said it's a rare condition, but nothing to be concerned about. This is after people began to spout nonsense online, talking about radiation in the water or some other pollutants. But that's not the case. The two-headed turtle, which was first discovered in 2019, is just something that happens sometimes in nature. There are not many examples of a creature being born with two heads, but it does sometimes happen. It happens with humans, too. The mutant was found after all the other turtle eggs hatched. The poor little two-headed freak was stuck inside of its egg and would not have been able to get out on its own. Luckily, volunteers on the site got it out and into the water, but it wasn't going to survive. It appeared that each flipper was controlled by a different head and so it couldn't swim very well. A small bump in the middle of the turtle shell suggested that each head had its own spine. This would mean that all the systems were going to be separately controlled by the different heads. It had absolutely no chance for survival in the wild. Fortunately for this cute little creature, it has a chance at survival if humans decide to care for it and give it a chance at a life it would never have had in nature. Human Skull 
Here we have a pretty interesting catch from a few years ago. A fishing trawler from Kilmore, Ireland happened to scoop up a rather gross extra in their nets, a human skull. They had been fishing 35 miles 55 kilometers off the coast in an area known as the West Celtic Deeps when they pulled a human skull out of the ocean inside their fishing net. Obviously alarmed, the fishermen took the human skull to the first place they thought, the local regional hospital. It was then examined by a pathologist, in which the preliminary examinations indicated that the skull had likely been at sea for between one and two years. However, the real mystery is the location where the skull was found. It was recovered extremely close to the wreckage of a boat that went down during World War II. The thing that would make the most sense is that the skull belonged to a dead soldier from the shipwreck, but if the skull had only been underwater for one or two years, how could that be possible? Whose skull is this? The whole thing is mysterious and a little bit terrifying. It's the definition of a cold case. What's the truth? We may never know. A murder mystery. No one would believe it, but this true story is the only time in recorded history that a tiger shark solved a murder mystery. The year was 1935. The owner of the Kugi Aquarium and Swimming Baths had been struggling with business when his son caught a 10-foot tiger shark a few miles off the shore in the ocean. Trying to be clever, the owner of the aquarium decided to transport the shark into the bath and then charge people to look at the incredible creature. It was a very smart business scheme. The plan worked well until one day the shark regurgitated a full human arm. The owner of the aquarium called the police, the police came and fished the arm out of the water, and after a bit of investigating, the police figured out that the arm had been cut and not bitten. Thanks to a tattoo on the arm, the authorities were able to identify the rest of the man. It turned out he was missing and believed to be murdered. With a bit of good police work, the cops were eventually able to arrest a man in connection to the murder, and it was all thanks to the tiger shark. I've heard of bloodhounds finding missing people, but never a tiger shark. How unbelievable is that? What do you think of these incredible catches? From the jungles of South America to the forests of Southeast Asia, here are 10 of the biggest snakes that ever lived, including a prehistoric monster of outrageous proportions. Burmese Python there are a lot of big snakes in this world of ours, and one of the largest snakes ever was a Burmese python captured in Florida back in 2012. Researchers with the United States Geological Survey in the state of Florida captured a Burmese python in the Everglades National Park that was approximately 17 feet and 7 inches long. That's 5.4 meters. It weighed 164.5 pounds and was an absolute monster. This obviously is not the biggest snake in existence, but at the time, it was the largest ever recorded for that state. What makes this particular find really cool is that scientists later found 87 eggs inside of the snake. This happened after the animal was brought to the Florida Museum of Natural History for some special examinations as part of a research project to try and figure out how to manage the invasive Burmese python problem. As you may know, Burmese pythons are not native to Florida, but they have been wreaking havoc on the ecosystem, eating a lot of native birds and preying on large animals like bobcats, alligators, and deer. Reticulated Python Back in 2016, one of the world's largest snakes was discovered at a Malaysian construction site. This enormous reticulated python measured a whopping 26.2 feet 8 meters in length. That makes it larger than five grand pianos and almost as long as a giraffe standing on the head of another giraffe. Just think about how long that is for a second. It is absolutely huge. This snake was also longer than Medusa, the longest captive snake on record according to Guinness World Records. However, the snake found in Malaysia would not be breaking any records as it actually died three days after it was discovered while in the middle of laying an egg. And so the reticulated python named Medusa, who makes her home in Kansas City, is still the record holder. According to Live Science, it actually took emergency services about 30 minutes just to wrangle the enormous reticulated python in Malaysia. And while locals claimed that the snake weighed at least 550 pounds, 250 kilograms, that's probably a little far-fetched. An anaconda might weigh upwards of 500 pounds, but not a reticulated python. These snakes are extremely long, but they aren't actually that heavy. Have you ever been bitten by a snake? How did it happen? Did you have to go to the hospital? Let me know what happened in the comments below. Also be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the subscribe button now so you can stay up to date with all the latest videos. African Rock Python Pythons are the largest snakes in the world, and while the reticulated python and the Burmese python are the most famous, there is another type of python that often flies under the radar. This snake is known as the African Rock Python, and it's the only one of its kind that lives in Africa. 
Most of the pythons live in different places in Asia, specifically in Southeast Asia. The African rock python lives in grasslands and savannas and sometimes along the edges of the forests in Sub-Saharan Africa. The snake is not venomous and it kills its prey just like other pythons by suffocating its victims between its muscly coils. Like other pythons, this one can grow to be between 20 and 30 feet, 6 to 9 meters, but they don't weigh that much. According to the Oregon Zoo, they only weigh up to 250 pounds. These aren't the biggest pythons by a mile, but they are unique to Africa and that makes them pretty cool. These pythons have been known to prey on warthogs, monkeys, crocodiles, and even dogs that get too close. Green Anaconda The green anaconda is the biggest of all the snakes. When it comes down to it, the green anaconda is really an animal out of this world and you have to see it to truly understand how outrageously huge it is. Anacondas are absolute monsters. Amazon folklore even places these snakes anywhere between 60 and 100 feet, 18 to 30 meters. Obviously, no green anaconda has ever been found that is that large. The biggest anaconda ever reliably documented was only 27.2 feet, 8.6 meters long, according to How Stuff Works. But the legends are still pretty cool. Unlike pythons, anacondas get heavy. These things can weigh upwards of 440 pounds, 200 kilograms. Because the green anaconda is so monstrously heavy, they tend to live in the water. They specifically love the rivers in the Amazon jungle and they make their homes in the various swamplands of Amazonia. Living in the water allows them to conceal their ridiculously long coils and it's easier for them to slither through the water than trying to navigate their huge bodies across the forest floor. What's really cool is that the anaconda has its eyeballs sitting on top of its head along with its nostrils and this allows it to swim through the water while keeping an eye on everything going on around it. These animals don't have any natural predators so they just kind of float through life without a care. Indian Python There seems to be a python for almost every area east of Europe. The Indian python is one of the largest snakes in the world, only smaller than the anaconda and the reticulated python. These serpents live in India, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, and Nepal, and they tend to grow to be a little over 20 feet, 6 meters, weighing somewhere around 150 pounds. Unlike the great anaconda that slithers through rivers, according to the Maryland Zoo, the Indian python is usually found dangling from tree branches where it can easily snatch a meal as it runs by below. These animals even like to claim a favorite roosting site where they spend most of their time lounging around and waiting to feast. Indian pythons hunt mostly at night, and they are well adapted to it because of the heat-sensing pits inside of their jaws. These special organs are incredibly sensitive to any change in temperature, and so whenever a warm-blooded animal starts to come near, the snake can easily prepare itself to strike. Another interesting fact is that when you see a snake like this flicking its tongue, it's not trying to tease you, it's actually gathering chemical samples from the atmosphere that are then analyzed by a unique organ situated inside the roof of the snake's mouth. How's that for a weather system? It's the snake equivalent of licking your thumb and putting it in the wind. Titanoboa The Titanoboa was the largest snake ever to roam the planet, and it makes the green anaconda look like a baby shrimp. To put it lightly, the Titanoboa was likely somewhere between 40 feet and 50 feet long, 12 to 15 meters. It's impossible to know the exact measurements, but after the recovery of this snake's fossils in Colombia just a few years ago, scientists have a pretty solid idea of how truly titanic this snake once was. The Titanoboa would have lived around 60 million years ago, back when much of South America was a swampy jungle with absolutely no humans in it. It was hotter back then than it is now today, and it was wetter too. And in this wet and humid jungle, there lived one king at the top of the food chain, the Titanoboa. It weighed over a ton, and it likely looked very similar to a modern boa constrictor. However, its actions and behavior would have been much like that of the current anaconda. It would have lived in rivers and other watery areas, and it would have eaten pretty much anything it wanted. One of its favorite meals was probably an ancient turtle that had a shell twice the size of a manhole cover. And even though this snake is most certainly dead and gone, it's still amazing to imagine what it would be like coming face to face with a serpent taller than an average apartment building. King Cobra the king cobra is the meanest snake in the world. It's a savage serpent with a very venomous bite, and it does not take any nonsense from anyone. 
Though definitely not the biggest or heaviest, the king cobra is indeed the longest species of venomous snake on the planet. These deadly creatures are native to India and Southeast Asia, with the average snake measuring around 12 feet 3.6 meters in length. According to Guinness World Records, the longest specimen on record was captured in 1937 in Malaysia, then put on display at the London Zoo. It measured 18 feet and 8 inches 6 meters. That's like the size of a small anaconda. This record-breaking snake actually had to be destroyed when World War II broke out, along with the other venomous snakes at the zoo. While this may seem cruel, it was done in order to protect the general public in case the zoo was bombed and all the venomous snakes got loose. Imagine a nearly 20-foot king cobra slithering through your bomb shelter and biting you in the face. Boa Constrictor the boa constrictor is the cousin of the anaconda. Both these snakes are amazing swimmers, but the boa constrictor is significantly smaller than its famous relative. The poor little boa constrictor can only grow to be around 13 feet, 4 meters long, and it typically does not weigh more than 100 pounds, 40 kilograms. And maybe it's this weight differential that gives the two snakes such contrasting behavioral patterns. Rather than slithering through the water like the anaconda, the boa constrictor likes to live in hollow logs, abandoned mammal burrows underground, or or somewhere else nice and cozy on dry land. These snakes are still good swimmers, but they prefer to hang out on the shore eating birds, monkeys, and wild pigs. Their jaws can stretch wide enough to swallow just about any prey whole. What's really cool about the boa constrictor is that it has some of the most distinctive markings out of any reptile. It all depends on what habitat the boa constrictor is trying to blend into. Depending on where it is, the snake can either be tan, red, green, or yellow, and its pattern will also be different, ranging from something simple like ovals or diamonds to jagged lines. Olive Python Our final python on the list for today is the olive python from Australia. Like I said earlier, it's as if every place in the world has its own special python. This particular bad boy is able to eat everything from kangaroos to possums, porcupines, and even wild crocodiles. Even though these aren't nearly as big as reticulated pythons or Burmese pythons, they are still the biggest snakes in Australia at roughly 13 feet 4 meters in length. And in a most recent show of strength, photos were uploaded by GG Wildlife Rescue Incorporated after an olive python was caught gobbling down a full crocodile like a fat guy with a donut. It's a little disturbing to see the snake's body bloated and about a foot of the alligator's tail sticking out from its mouth, but that's just how these snakes roll. Clearly, they are at the top of the food chain. However, after eating such a large meal, it usually takes a few months for it to be digested. This greedy snake will be sitting there with the crocodile in its stomach for quite some time before it can get back to whatever it was doing before. Black Mamba Last on the list is the Black Mamba. It's a far cry from the pythons and constrictors of the world, but it's still a huge snake. Not only that, but it's a snake with a reputation. It's one of the deadliest snakes in the entire world, and it's also the fastest land snake according to live science. It's the longest venomous snake in Africa, and the danger of this beast has been the subject of countless African myths. Throughout the years, the black mamba has been blamed for thousands of human deaths, though the real number of this snake's victims are extremely difficult to come by. On average, a black mamba will grow to be around 14 feet 4 meters long, though they are more likely going to be only 8 feet 2.5 meters. 14 is definitely on the larger side. You can easily tell the black mamba from its coffin-shaped head, its bad attitude, and its inky black eyes. These snakes live in the savanna of East Africa and South Africa. They like rocky hills and open woodlands. And according to the University of Michigan Museum of Zoology, they really enjoy sleeping in the hollows of trees, so think twice before sticking your head where it doesn't belong on your next trip to Africa. Which of these monster snakes frightens you the most? Share your fears in the comments section and thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and come back soon for another great video.